Hello everyone, this is Pippin Williams with PippinsPlugins.com and I want to give you an overview of everything that we've covered in our user submitted image galleries tutorial. This has been a really long series uh, with eight in-depth parts and we've covered a lot of information. We've covered everything from registering our post types, creating our custom taxonomies, displaying our galleries with a short code, um, everything from querying our gallery to display specific categories or tags, uh, we've done. We've covered pagination. We've covered image sizes. We've covered uh, an image upload form that allows users, either guest or register, to submit their images for approval. We've covered emailing uh, the admin account when there's a new image create submitted. Uh, we've covered customizations of the WordPress admin to give us a pending images widget as well as to customize the dashboard columns. Uh, and there's a variety of other things that we've covered as well. So. We've covered a lot of information, obviously. So now I just kind of want to give you an overview of everything that we've created. We're going to take a step back, look at what we have finished, and look at what this could be. Because there's a lot of things that we haven't done in this tutorial series. A lot of really important aspects that we've left out. Um, things that could be improved a lot. Things, especially when it comes to flexibility. This plugin as it is, as we built it in the series, is really not ready for distribution. It's going to be, it's free for any of you to download, any registered subscriber, but it's really not ready for uh, mass distribution. So at, as it stands right now, I would not go and put this on the WordPress plugin repository because there's some severe limitations to it. So I want to talk about those. Um, and we're going to talk about the good things that we've done here as well. So first of all, let's just kind of take a look at what we have as the overall effect. Um, once we have our gallery plugin set up, we can have a gallery page kind of like you can see right here. We can have our categories across the top that allow us to filter um, the gallery by specific categories. We have a search field that we can use to search for a specific tag. Um, and note that you can also search within a category and tag. So these are only images that match landscapes and tag one. We can also do tag one, tag two. So these are now the images that match these three that have all of these. Now, if we want, we can just clear everything out and go back to all. Uh, we can also, we have paginations, we have page one, page two, and we can define the number of images that are displayed per page. Uh, we've taken care of column layouts. So we have it set up to display four images per, uh, per row, and then it goes down to the next row. So even though we haven't done perfect alignment over here, we still have all of that set up ready to be used. Uh, we can go to an individual image, and we can see that full size image, we can see the author that that did that image, we can view the categories the image is filed in, the description, the tags, and also other images by this user. So now we can click on this image and go to and view all of the details for the fall image. And again, we see now this is by the image uh, author Kim Doe. We can click on her name, and now we see all images that she has submitted. If we want, we can go back to our main gallery page, go to a new image, and now see all images by Jimbo Taylor. He's done two. We can go to either one of these and again see all the details. We can click on any, whoops, no, we can't do that. So there's one thing that we've left out is, so these links right here are linking to the category archives. Well, our system doesn't really work with the category archives. Instead, our system works with a custom query system we've set up in our gallery. So that's one limitation that we've already found is that when on an individual detail page, we can't click these links because those don't work. So there's an enhancement that we need to look into. But that's what the point of this overview is for, is to kind of look at some of the limitations we have, as well as the good things that we've done. Uh, we also have our submission form. So we can go up here to submit image, and we can fill in the user, the image name, the description, choose the category that it's going to be in, give it some tags, upload an image, and then submit the image as well. Once that image is submitted to the dashboard, it's going to come in here with a status of pending. Um, and we can see all of the images that we've already submitted. On our dashboard page itself, we have a widget right here that says pending user images. Any image that is pending submission, or it's been submitted but hasn't been approved, will show up right here. Uh, so we can see all of our images here. We can view all images by a particular user. So here's all images by Jimbo. We can see the categories and the tags that they're in and the previews. We have a custom taxonomy for categories and tags that are specific to these images. Uh, so we really have a pretty full, complete system that allows us to do quite a bit. So let's take a look at some of the things that really need improved with this system as well. 
one of the things that we need is a way to set up dynamic width detection. So here I have a 940 width, I believe. It might be 900 or something like that. I'm not great with widths. Uh, but anyway, so we have, we have our page width here. And what would be really great is if we could define the number of columns and then have it automatically resize our images down to the right size and the number of columns. So if I want five columns, it's automatically going to make the fifth image end right here so that it lines up perfectly with the page. That would be a really cool enhancement. Now, it's pretty complex, but it's definitely doable. Um, th the next thing that we could do is we could actually have a lot of styling controls. So one thing that I did with this is I did very, very minimal styling, primarily because the point of the tutorial series was not to talk not to talk about how to style your gallery. Anybody who can write CSS can do that. It was really about how do we build the infrastructure in the plugin to support the gallery. So we didn't talk about that. But that's one improvement you could make, is adding a lot of styling to the gallery and different style options. Um, the next thing that we could really do is improve the, uh, the category archives. So we go to an image here, and as I showed you a moment ago, these links right here do not link back to the same place that these links do. Notice that if we click here, we're still on the gallery page. But if I click here, we've actually gone over to the category archive. Now, um, I need to refresh my permalink structure, which is why you see this. But really what we need to do is we need to take those links and force them to redirect back to our gallery page. So that's another improvement that we could do. Um, something else that we could do is actually dramatically improve the submit image form. And not only in styling, but we could give it some more options. Um, you could give it the ability, maybe add in the option to say you agree to our terms of use. Um, you could add in jQuery validation. There's a whole variety of things that you could add in there that really need to be done if you want to make this plugin ready for distribution. Another thing that we could do is have the option to sort or not sort, but search the gallery, not only by tags, which is the only option we have at the moment, but search by username, search by category. So let's say if I go in and, and type landscapes, it should actually act, should act as or function as an actual search field. So we could have a real search field that searches inside of our gallery itself. Um, so those are some, some big things that we could do to really make this better. Um, Ultimately, the thing that you want to keep in mind when you're building a plugin like this, especially a plugin like this, which has a lot of, is impacted pretty heavily by the layout of your theme. One of the things you really have to keep in mind is making it work across different themes. I built this to work pretty well with the Swagger theme and the default 2011 theme, but the majority of the users of the plugin are probably not going to be running either of those themes. So we have to make sure that it works with a lot of them. And I'm not just talking about making sure that you don't have conflicts. I mean, that's a kind of a no brainer. Yes, you need to do that. I'm really talking about, we need to account for different layouts. We need to account for the fact that some themes are going to be primarily full width layouts. Some themes are going to be half width. Some of them are going to be have two sidebars. We need to be able to account for all of those different things um, in order to make a plugin like this really ready for distribution. And that makes it really, really complex. I mean, if you think we've covered a lot of information in this tutorial series, in these eight, eight, nine parts, nine parts with this overview, um, getting this plugin ready for distribution is going to double or triple that, the amount of stuff that we've put into this plugin. I mean, this plugin is not even nearly finished. We're kind of wrapping up the tutorial series just because we've covered everything that you need to know in terms of building the infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure is the base on which we need to build this plugin, everything we need to know to build this sort of thing. But that doesn't mean that this is ready. All of the work for this plugin was really based off of something that I did for the CG Cookie website. We built them a, a large user submitted gallery system. And the original system was pretty minimal uh, and actually was not much more than what we built in this plugin. But it was very, very theme specific. It was just for the CG Cookie theme. Well, this plugin that we built in the series is designed to be a lot more flexible. And ultimately, when it's actually released as an official plugin, it's going to need to work with all the themes. I have now, I'm going back at this time right now and completely overhauling the original system that I built for the CG Cookie website. Um, and it's much, much more advanced, probably double or triple the amount of code 
files, etc. Now it's cleaned up a lot as well, but what I'm really trying to get at here is that even though this tutorial series is done, don't think of this as a ready to plug and play plugin because it's really not. This is the infrastructure that you need to start building your own user submitted gallery. This should teach you everything that you really need to know to build this into your own site and build it specific to your theme. So let's say that you run a website, whatever it may be, maybe it's a photographer's website, and you have a gallery that you want users to be able to upload images to. This is going to provide you the base on which to build your system. You can then take this, modify it, add in the additional little features that you need, make sure everything works perfectly in terms of layout and things like that. So this is the base, it's not a finished plugin. Anyway, so we covered a lot of information. Um, I hope it was really informative for everybody. Uh, there's some things would have been really simple, some uh, whereas some aspects of it were really, really advanced. Um, so I hope even if you found part two and three not very useful for you, maybe part five or six was. So if you've looked at one or two parts and you're not quite sure about it, go ahead and go through all of them. Even if you don't read every line, read every line of code, read, at least glance over them and see, oh, this is an aspect that I really wanted to know about. One particular section that I think a lot of people will find extremely helpful is the one where we talk about how to query using the tax query parameter for a Git post and how to query by different tags and categories both. Um, that's a pretty advanced topic that a lot of people really struggle with. It's really not that complicated, but you really have to know how it works in order to create a functioning system. So if you've stuck with me till the end, I really, really appreciate it. Let me know your feedback and thanks for being here.